In this lecture, we are going to learn how to call a web service from Salesforce. For example, we have got a web service which gives us facts about the cat. Now, in our example, we will update a record in Salesforce. As soon as the record is updated, the web service will be called and then anything that is returned by web service will be updated on the record itself. Now, if we look at this particular web service, it has got a get method and this is the path and what it returns is the facts as such. So if I look at that, so this is something that is returned by the web service and we are interested in the text of it. Now let's go to design center. Over here, I have already created HTTP request parameter where the host is there and also Salesforce where I specified my username and password. Similarly, since I am aware of the data type of the web service, I have created it which is in a JSON format. If you want to know how I create it, if I go back, I just copy pasted this example output over here and it generated that data type for me for the web service. Now, the very first step for our design would be when we need to call this web service. In our example, as soon as a record is modified in Salesforce, so I'll select Salesforce connector on modified object and that object would be contact we'll say seconds 5 so we have created a trigger event which says that anytime a contact record is updated keep on polling Salesforce every 5 seconds to find if any contact record is updated or not now, once this particular record is updated, we need to store its ID. So for that, we'll make use of set variable. Let that variable name be CID. And to store it, we are going to make use of message dot payload dot ID. So what we are doing, whatever is the payload that is going to come from Salesforce, we are storing that ID into a variable by name CID. This we are doing because at the very end, we need to update that record. Once we have done with this, then we need to call our web service. So for that, we will HTTP. And we need to specify the path. Where do you want it to? So my path is fax random. And I want to make use of get method for this particular web service. So that's why I selected get over here. I'll hit close. Now, once a response is received from this, we also need to now update it into Salesforce. So, I'll again select Salesforce. I need to update. So, I'll select update. And I want to update the contact. Close. Now that response from web service would be in JSON but over here I have got array of results so I need to transform so we'll select transform in between and we'll close it for the time being to reiterate 
Our objective is anytime a Salesforce record is updated, call a web service. Whatever re result is returned by that web service, go back and update the same record. To do that, we have created a trigger on modified object. We are storing that ID in a variable. Then we are calling the web service. We are then transforming the response and then updating the Salesforce. So now let's look into the transformation. Over here, if I look into the script, So, what we are saying that the ID, the ID of the record which needs to be updated should be that ID which is stored in the variable CID. And there is a field on contact by name description that should be updated with payload.text. Now this, we need to specify the payload, this is set. So I can close it now. Now just to reiterate what we have done, if I go back to my transformation, the web service is going to return me a lot of things, but I am more interested in text. The text I have mapped it to a description column on the contact object and also the ID I am getting it from the stored variable. Now if I run this particular one and if I open the Salesforce also. So in Salesforce, I have got this contact. Over here, the description is empty. Now, whenever I update a record in Salesforce, a web service callout will be made and this particular field will be updated with the response of that particular web service. So let it, it's still loading. Let it start running. 